This is Twit. Hey, anyway, I wanted to talk about uh, the state of security, why it is the way it is, you know, and and what's it, what do we do about it in the future to make it better? And I, I even have a, a just a quick example of something that was really boneheaded this one company did. They, I discovered that their password recovery, uh, it was sent, the password was sent in plain text. In the email. Yeah. Yeah, they just said, here's your password. Have a yeah. nice day. Nice. And, yeah. And I did inform them about this, and they actually did take care of it. And oh, the that's CTO good. actually called me back and said, hey, thanks for letting us know. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. Here's what we did. You know, it was actually ended up being their software provider that provided their software. Oh, so the CTO knew better. He just didn't realize he'd never had occasion to ask for a new password. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's where, that's why I'm kind of calling, you know, why do companies not vet their software? And why did this company that wrote the software, you know, why did they make mistakes well, like this? What were they thinking? <laughs> exactly. I think, uh, I think we should do a segment. We could easily do it. What were they thinking? <laughs> so I don't want to be too hard on companies because security is hard. So let, there's a few things at play here. First of all, there's no such thing as perfect software. Every program has bugs. You, you just you, Any program of a, any reasonable size, and the programs we use today, including our operating systems, are massive, just is going to have flaws and it is often the case that those flaws can lead to security problems exploits often uh, it's said if you can figure out a way to crash a program remotely you could figure out a way to hack it because you know that's a prelude to a crash uh, as a prelude to being hacked so that's problem one is just it's in the nature of the beasts software and hardware is so incredibly complex that it's inevitably going to have flaws now we've exacerbated we've made it worse in a, in a for a number of ways one is we use languages that allow programmers to make dumb mistakes so there are generally more flaws than there need to be the programming industry is kind of waking up to that but remember coders who are writing software they're often on deadline there's a lot of pressure sometimes they take the quick and easy way and sometimes they miss you know, things that you might think are obvious because they're under such pressure. So, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into this. There's also the issue of testing. And both Microsoft and Apple have recently come under a lot of fire because they've had <clears throat> broad public tests of both Windows 10 and iOS 13. And despite that, despite the fact that millions of people used it for months, many very serious bugs went undetected and people are saying well how could that happen and this is the this is the complexity of what we're dealing with uh, maybe those bugs were reported but the systems that the company set up weren't adequate to you know handling the inflow of bug reports maybe the bug was introduced later what one of the things apple says they're going to do and they did they didn't say this publicly but they said it in an all hands meeting is they're going to have switches that you can turn off features while you're testing because the problem has been with so many new features, you can have so many bugs that you're not sure exactly what's going wrong. Um, there's also It's also possible to fix the wrong bug. And then there's the problem you alluded to, which is poor security practices. And that's a big problem. I think companies, in, in light of all these breaches lately, are kind of understanding that they cannot be cavalier about security but some of this mindset comes from a day when you just really didn't have to worry about security none of the tools we use were designed with security in mind especially the internet i once asked uh vince surf who's often considered the father of the internet he created the the protocol the 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 rules for communicating called tcp for computing communicating computer to computer and i asked vince is there anything in hindsight you'd have done differently and he said, yeah, I would have built an encryption. When they first designed the Internet, when they first designed email, many cloud systems, many operating systems, they were designed you know, to work efficiently, but they were never designed with the mindset that somebody might attack them. And that's what's changed. You know, and that's changed dramatically in 20 years. We used to be able to use email and not worry about the fact that it was you know, unencrypted, it was 
you know, anybody could read it along the way. Anybody could spoof it. But once spam became a problem, people started to think, oh, maybe we should have been a little more careful about designing this. Problem is, it's too late. Everybody's doing it the old way, and it takes a concerted effort to redo how you do email or any of these things. I think you did the right thing. Whenever you see something, the pro you know, you were thinking with a, you put your security hat on, and you were thinking what the threat model could be. A lot of people don't want to think that way. They don't want to think... Um, like a bad guy thinks they they don't they want to you know they want to think everybody's trustworthy the world is a wonderful place and we don't have to worry about attacks but a good security expert unfortunately it's actually a hardship for them <laughs> thinks constantly thinks the worst right everything you know the worst what's the worst that can happen they're disaster minded it's kind of an occupational hazard uh, same thing with backup, right? You you got to think what's the worst that could happen, and a lot of people don't want to live that way. I don't want to live that way, but nevertheless, that's how you have to if you're going to be a security expert. So, you did actually one of the things is most helpful. You you notified the company, and by the way, kudos to the company they responded. But you said, look, you know, it's insecure to send a password in in in, in the clear an email. <clears throat> There's even more subtle things that companies do all the time. I see it all the time that are just security nightmares <clears throat> and you know there are a lot of reasons it's expensive to fix it maybe they don't know maybe they know but they can't you know a lot of times a company will say you can't have a password longer than eight or ten or twelve characters that's that's not a good policy but maybe their system is set up in such a way that they can't do any better and it would cost them millions to fix it the other thing that's more insidious and then i'll i'll stop because i'm non-stop talking on this one but the other thing that's really insidious <clears throat> and sometimes we don't take into account many companies know things they could do to make it more secure but they also know that if they do that they're going to get a lot more tech support calls it's going to cost them money for example banks should absolutely never use text messages sms to verify your login that's just known to be a real security flaw but they do it and they continue to do it even though they know better because any other solution would cost them lots of money in tech support because people go, well, I'm confused. I don't understand. How does that work? I lost my password. I don't know what to do now. So a lot of times companies, especially big companies, make decisions that are less than optimal security-wise just because it would be too expensive. It would, it would confuse their users to do anything properly. That's, a, that's an education problem. That's something I need to work harder on and teach people how to do things right so that we are all a little bit more aware of the issues in security. It's a really good question. And, it, and there is, as you can see, there are many reasons why we aren't as secure as we ought to be. Really, the, the, num, you know, the chief reason is we've been doing this for a long time and st stuff creeps up on you gradually. It's called entropy. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's, the, it's the way of the world. I'm glad you, you know what, you did the right thing, though, Jeff. I think that was good you called the company. I'm amazed they responded. Yes, they did. They they actually uh, emailed me several different times. It, it, I'm surprised it got out of the first stage of people, you know, but it, it kept going to hire more executives and then finally to the CTO. So and, that, and that's another thing a lot of companies are doing and more should do, which is having people in charge of security. The, the title is CISO. Chief Information Security Officer. And every company that has personal information or needs to secure logins and something should have a CISO and a team, a security team. And when the secure when the CISO comes to the CEO and says, Boss, we got a problem, you need to spend a million dollars, the boss has to do it. And one of the ways we can ensure this is what I was talking about at the beginning of the show. It's important that the laws punish companies that don't protect our data so that there is a penalty for not doing the right thing because otherwise they'll say well yeah fine so what if there's a if, if there's a break in we'll deal with it then uh, and that that's it's got there's got to be some uh, there's got to be some pain involved hey thank you for the question jeff it's a great question oh thanks for answering i appreciate your calling yeah it's a it's a one of the things i like to talk about because it is something we need to deal with and really as individuals we can deal with it you, you can learn a little bit about protecting your... It really doesn't take a lot. Uh, you want to know what what I think you need to do to stay safe? It's just a handful of things. 
Keep your software updated. Really important, especially your operating systems or, or anything that goes online. Keep that up to date. Every morning when you start up your computer, you should check and see that everything's up to date. Really important. Um, you should use a password manager. <clears throat> when you create passwords, the temptation is to create something that you can remember. That's almost always a bad password and easily guessed. And the other temptation that goes hand in hand is to use the same password or a variation of the same password over and over. Those are very bad security practices. The good news is you can easily free or inexpensively get a password manager that will create good, long, unmemorable passwords and then memorize them for you so you don't have to remember them and fill them in for you. Uh, password manager is huge. Uh, you should also uh, use two-factor authentication wherever you can. You've probably heard about this. This is the idea that it's more than a password. When you log into Facebook, the, at least the first time on any new device, it's more than just your login and password. You also need to get, you know, have a Facebook code sent to you. And that's called two-factor. That's two different ways of proving you are who you say you are. And two is more than twice as good. Hackers are stopped by it. Two-factor is huge. Wherever you can turn on two-factor, turn it on. Uh, I think those three things really update, two-factor, and uh, password manager. Those are, those are the three most important things you can do. And I think if you do that, it's not, that's not hard. It just takes a little, you know, paying attention. You will at least do the best you can. You can't prevent these companies from doing a bad job, but you will at least be doing the best you can.